Good evening, everybody. I hope you all are doing really well. And with my fingers crossed, I'm saying this, that even though the pandemic is receding now, uh, you know, it's out of habit that we've got used to doing things so much virtually, like this panel as well. You know, we're doing it virtually. And what has really happened over the past one and a half year is that digital has become the way of life. And it's not just the innovators and the early adopters that are turning, you know, their backs on traditional media in favor of, uh, you know, digital platforms today. But, uh, you know, uh, I would say the pandemic and the lockdown of 2020 has even strong down even the diehard traditionalists, you know, into embracing digital simply as a means to stay connected to the world outside. And digital has become a solution for everything today, right? Uh, a means to satisfy needs which are as basic as getting our food, ordering enough food, or staying in touch with our friends and family, or, you know, getting information about anything and everything that we may want to do, or, um, you know, accessing the goods or services that we were so used to physically accessing in the past. Um, and not only has this changed our behaviors today as consumers, I think our expectation has also changed from how we interact with brands. And it has also changed the way we consume content today. And as consumers, we expect uh, to be interacted with, you know, interacted with in a very different manner. And companies, on the other hand, are also recognizing this change in consumer behavior to my mind. So they are pivoting their tactics and their you know, marketing budgets, not only in a way to communicate to the consumers, but also to service them and delight them through uh, digital and while working remotely in the current situation. Um, and also, if I look at digital marketing, I think it has evolved a lot in the past uh, couple of years. Uh, it's also because people are changing, behaviors are changing, and their expectations are really changing. And as the new normal is getting established and new behaviors are getting established, uh, how are brands unlocking this growth? That's what we are going to talk about today. You know, we all know that, you know, social media perhaps has been the first step for many brands to get into digital. But today, brands are really moving up the digital maturity curve and using many other ways of interacting with the consumers on digital, you know, be it through video marketing, which has really taken off uh, really well, you know, as opposed to text or using, you know, social media influencer marketing to be able to, um, you know, create content and uh, in a way which is relatable to their uh, potential customers or, you know, use, using regional marketing to drive growth because, you uh, India is an aggregation of, you know, distinct languages and cultures. And we all know, we've witnessed uh, that, you know, there is a significant spike in the audience um, having diverse, re you know, regional choices, not only in terms of their uh, language, but also their tastes in content and consumption. Um, and to discuss this and to leverage some of these trends, you know, I have a very esteemed panel today, uh, who I'm going to request to introduce themselves. Uh, I'll start off with you, uh, Dr. Aditya Banerjee. Very good evening, everybody. Uh, it, it is indeed a real pleasure to be a part of the panel. And uh, like Rubina just now described, our lives have really changed after post-COVID. And now we have started looking at the entire uh, you know, uh, way of uh, uh, doing marketing and promoting our brand and products. Uh, I'm running a uh, startup for the last three years with the name of Sahara Evolves. We deal in electric vehicles and we have been able to leverage uh, digital marketing and digital platforms really well. And it helped us a lot in, in expanding our brand awareness and, uh, and uh, you know, translating that to our sales. We'll discuss that further, I believe. So I'll, uh, I'll off to you. Looking forward to talk. Yeah. Looking forward to talking to you about your, uh, you know, usage of digital. Uh, Gagan, if I can come to you next, if you can just quickly introduce yourself. Well, hello everybody. Good evening. I'm Gagan Sachdev, managing director of Bodyline. We are into sports and fitness, and uh, it is a great pleasure to be here on this panel today. And um, you know, listening from you and interacting with you guys would be a, a really a great experience, I guess. And um, here we are talking about digital and I will also talk about my business and its growth and how things are changing and our mindset are changing. 
in this due course of discussion, we'll have a good, good time. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Uh, Nimrit, can you please introduce yourself very quickly? Good evening, everyone. Uh, hello, I'm Nirmit Bhandari. Uh, I'm Director of Marketing and Exports, Vasant Masala Private Limited. Uh, we are Spices Manufacturing Company, uh, operating in this uh, domestic and international market since last 50 years. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, thought-provoking discussion and looking digital for growth. Uh, uh, I hope we'll be having good discussion during this session. I'm looking forward uh, to this discussion as well. Mr. Panda, uh, I'll move on to you. Namaskar. Good evening, Namaskar. all. I'm director of Bharat Masala. You are a major manufacturer of spices and pasta in Eastern India. Uh, during the COVID period, very mainly faced many, faced many difficult and a still period to how to develop with the social media, digital platform. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm going to straight jump into this uh, conversation because we have such an esteemed panel without taking more time. And I'd love to know a little bit more about, you know, uh, the impact of COVID on your business and how you're getting really future ready and what the learnings of the past one and a half year have been because the past one and a half year, you will all agree has disrupted the way we have done business across, uh, you know, completely. I'll move on. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it on to Dr. Aditya. You want to tell me? Uh, well, being in the product business, it was uh, it was really really hard. You know, the, those third, third, you know, those those three months were, I, I believe, were the were the most uh, critical months for the entire last three years of our journey. And uh, we took a lot of drastic decisions during that period, and and there was a lot of learning as well. You know, that was the time when we really understood that running a product business wherein we thought that it had to be run in a in a conventional way wherein you have to give a touch and feel and without that you're not going to sell your product is not the real case you can generate an interest so it is all about getting those hits getting those you know uh, influencing the market first before we actually got into the sales part of it so sales, you know, it was a huge learning that you know sales is not just you know putting a good product in the market and you know selling it in the market. It's it's an entire process of generating, uh, so you know, creating sort of an experience around it. So we shifted to uh, digital during that period precisely. Before that, we were doing most of our marketing through conventional mediums, and that was the time we decided that you know because we have nothing else to do. You know, we're sitting at home. Everybody was at home, and we were a startup. Uh, we thought. What, what best can we do? So uh, there was a, it was, it was a light bulb saying that, uh, okay, let us do whatever we can do. So everybody is on Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube. Let us see whether we can make the best of it or not. We started creating a brand awareness, educating about the product because electric vehicle, when you talk about one and a half years back, was still you know in that phase of gaining some steam. Right now it is pretty hot. But one and a half years back, it was still, you know, people, are, the customer was not aware, especially the market that we catered. We were majorly present in tier two, tier three cities. So the idea of an EV was, you know, that, like that. It, during those three months, all we did was we, 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 had, we tried to educate the mass. It helped us a lot in terms of generating brand awareness, uh, generating uh, sales queries, you know. Uh, because we could geo target, we could we could uh, wherever we we were getting uh, uh, more interest from the customers, we could generate our uh, you know dealer leads. So it helped us a lot, and we could see that by spending much less from the conventional way of doing marketing, we could create much you know uh, bigger output out of it. It was very very interesting. It was a huge learning, and uh, it was a blessing in disguise, I would say. And uh, today also my team says that uh, we had maybe worked the most during those th you know, th those three months. Uh, and, and we try to use whatever whatever means possible to make our brand you know, uh, visible into the market through WhatsApp, through YouTube, through these three mediums we majorly used. 
and it came really really cheap in terms of when we started calculating in terms of the marketing spend that we were spending uh, uh, by doing uh, you know uh, exhibitions by doing paper ads by doing uh, you know uh, camps you know uh, free camps it was much less than that and Absolutely. we could cover much more geographically so it was indeed a great experience so you finally felt the power of digital you know that's yes, how we were all forced in that situation and like yeah uh, yes. dip the hands uh, dip our feet in it and then actually you know uh, realize how much digital can do with us and gagan i want to ask you also fitness as a business pivoted very very quickly you know it was one of the first businesses to uh, uh, pivot uh, during the lockdown and i know myself you know like from being a fitness enthusiast you know to going to gyms to went on to online tra- uh, training and all of that but how do you see this business in the future now that things are going back do you still think uh, digital it's going to stay more digital is it going to be more physical is it going to be a hybrid how are you using digital media i'd love to hear your thoughts on it so as was a you know very conventional old style retail off show offline stores you see so we have we have a retail chain of stores uh, under the name of body line and um, uh, our presence in east india uh, was very strong and if you uh, ask me frankly digitally we were not very strong till and we are still not very strong as on date we are, we are trying very hard to you know adopt the measures and you know styles of digital marketing but having said that uh, for for us digital marketing only meant facebook insta and uh, whatsapp marketing that's all that's all we understood till till this pandemic struck us and obviously as uh, we all know it has been a great great learning during these one and a half years and uh, now we are geared up we are uh, getting ready the teams are being set up in place and we feel that the future is definitely digital it's going to be strong strong digital Uh, presence only will save businesses because there's a strong competition online rather than it is being on offline right now so having said that ways and measures are being adopted learned and uh, implemented but uh, as i see uh, fitness uh, online presence online training classes are taking uh, quite a major share offline will still take some time i'm i'm very very positive that offline will also flourish well along with online and um, to my knowledge it will be well balanced with uh, due in the due course of time but what we understand as as a retailer as a product seller you know for us uh, offline will be our first choice number one number two since we are selling hardcore products physical products we have to be uh, very very careful with what medium of advertising we choose a because our products needs delivery our products need service our product needs um, interaction with customer so uh, being our presence on online has to be very very polished in terms of our product presence and information and pricing because we have to compete with competitors across the globe not locally when you are online definitely people will have lot of choices not only you so all these factors have to be measured very carefully and taken care of while you uh, you know present your products well while you present your brand on um, e-commerce sites or your own online um, branding and sales marketing pitch so but this is i i understand we have we have got lots and lots to learn we are just taking you know initial steps i would say over to you now but i think that's the start right as long as you're cognizant that you know that's the way uh, uh, the consumers moving and that's the way uh, you know business will be done in the future and you know you're not you're taking uh, note of that and trying to get ready to get into digital i think that's the first step and it's like how you build from there and build you know your business on uh, digital as you go forward uh, uh, you know Absolutely. so that's happening to know uh, uh, you know um i'll move on to uh, sushanta and i want to know from you um that you know how are you looking at uh, uh, digital advertising and what are the avenues that you are uh, exploring in your business actually uh, as we all know digital 
advertising is a kind of communication with the consumer uh, in terms of promoting a product or a brand or sending a message to the consumer or the end user on a digital platform. So, well, uh, this is what we understand by web advertising or digital advertising. Right. So, you know, are you, uh, are you using digital advertising? Up? To some extent, we have done it. In the past, we have done some digital advertising uh, in the past through some agencies, okay, Jee. to promote our new products and also for our, for our new product campaigns and all. We have done it in the past. So, how your experience when you tried it? We are yet to build or see the returns from it or to evaluate the ROIs on what we had spent on such campaigns and all. We are not very clear to be very frank. Yeah. And I must candidly confess that, well, in a certain way, it did cater to a certain segment of target audience. But I don't know whether it has really uh, real tangible benefits for the company. I think what you say is true, unless one, you know, uh, you're convinced that there is tangible benefits. And I, I personally believe that there is a lot of benefit. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, as a business owner, you have to be convinced that there is tangible benefit to obviously scale uh, your marketing on that medium. And uh, Tanvir, I want to ask you. Yeah, but uh, but I, will, I would like to yeah. also add a yeah. few things. Yes, and we are in the spice domain, as you know, and we are customer, we are having right. consumers right. and customers spread across all villages in India, Pan India, right? Whom we sell our products and all. And uh, well, you see now, digital literacy is also not that good or not that penetrable in the villages and all. So digital literacy has to be improved, and the infrastructure in terms of broadband internet and all in the rural villages have to be strengthened and the state has to do something about it to strengthen the infrastructure in villages and all so that we can have a better product outreach. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you. And um, Tanvir, uh, you know, would you like to share what is your view on it? Because as a digital marketer, hardcore digital marketer, I believe I have a lot of hope. Uh, and I also believe that, uh, you know, and we're also seeing it in the numbers that, uh, you know, it's really scaling up in digital is scaling up, not just in the metros, but beyond the metros as well. And a lot of businesses are, you know, leveraging uh, uh, this for the benefit of, uh, you know, uh, this expanding audience for the benefit of their business. What has your experience been? What is it, you know, you work with a large set of uh, brands. So what has your experience been? Is there any interesting stories you'd like to share with us? Thanks for the question, firstly, Rubina. I'll kind of divide my answer into two parts. First, to address what Gagan raised and second, to address what Mr. Panda raised, right? Um, I think it's critical for any media platform, right? For any advertiser, if you're using a media platform to very clearly define what are the business objectives and marketing objectives you'd like to achieve via the usage of a media platform, whether it be digital, print, TV, outdoors, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to define that out clearly. In most cases, ROI is not measured right if there's a misalignment on what the business objectives and the marketing objectives of your campaign or your usage of the platform is so i would urge uh, now whether that is your your business objective could be sales your business object marketing objective could be awareness of your brand because you're just launching a new brand your marketing objective could be reach which could be in tier two tier three tier one cities as well or your business objective could be just to gain insights about you know the different diaspora that exists across the country because digital gives you that right and we've we've utilized that amply so i think that's number one to answer uh, the point that gagan was uh, making as well to mr panda's point i think it doesn't matter in terms of what price point necessarily your product comes at right the reality is the consumer is purchasing whether on e-commerce a 10 rupee product and is also purchasing a 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 rupee product as well, if not more, right? What's critical, however, to know is which consumer is going ahead and purchasing it and how can you reach out most effectively to that consumer? So let me give you a few data points, Mr. Panda, this may be helpful for you, right? What growth you will see on digital going forward will come from Bharat. 
your tier one cities are saturated now they're done with right your numbers are roughly around 650 million odd going up to roughly around 800 million of internet internet population right out of a 1.2 billion population so you've already got 70 percent of that population covered which basically includes bharat as well now however if you reach out to bharat in english you will not get a conversion because 73 percent of content that is consumed online happens in vernacular language in the country as in 2021 which basically means if you're reaching out to let's say a population sitting in up bihar that belt the hindi speaking belt you rather go ahead and speak to them in the language that they understand most and hence your your conversations, the content that you advertise on needs to be in their language, in the content they tend to consume. I think most mistakes are made where we go ahead and tend to use the same format, irrespective of whom you're going ahead and advertising. When I, I see Akash nodding his head because he's, he's got a fairly large reach as a, as a brand as well, right? If you go ahead and advertise in a certain language in South India, it may not work. You know, you've got to be different, and digital gives you that power. So I would strongly urge Mr. Panda saying that, hey, the population is already there. What you need to find out is what is the population doing on digital? Are they listening to music? Are they watching Bollywood? Are they watching cricket? Will they watch the World Cup match today? Are they doing that? And are you present on that content? If you do that, you will get your conversions. You will get your brand awareness. That's the power of digital. So a little bit of self-education as a group for all of us. We are all learning constantly as well. Aruchita, me, Rubina, all of us are learning constantly as well. I think only helps us utilize the platform better. Thanks. If I can, uh, Rubina, just come in and add a little bit to what yes, we were saying, right? Uh, of course. If, uh, if I can just share uh, for Mr. Panda and everyone else, right? Uh, in terms of the internet penetration numbers also, you know, the 700 million number that Tanvi spoke about, almost 45% of that now is in rural India. You know, we are talking about tier two, tier three cities, and that's where the internet penetration has reached. Out of, you know, this almost roughly 300 million people who are in rural India accessing the internet, they are accessing it on mobile. So the other element other than vernacular is also that is the content that we're putting out there, is it mobile compatible? Kya hum apna big screen wala creative asset hum small screen pe present kar rahe Because then that experience for the consumer is also broken. The other data point that I want to also bring in is if you talk about 300 million rural consumers, there are almost one third of the consumers already in online commerce. They are purchasing something online, purchase kar rahe hai, which means the Bharat is now not only getting comfortable with the internet, but they also have the trust uh, of you know, actually going and converting that into commerce. And you know we see this in our uh, digital payment numbers, UPI numbers. We see it in so many other different ways that it's telling us that our consumer is probably learning more quickly from And probably we have to pay up with them. And you know, and I think that's the piece that we have to all recognize and you know, humbly recognize that you know, we have to be learning at the same pace as our consumers are learning because they seem to be learning and adopting technology faster than all of us. So, uh, absolutely agree with you, Ruchira, on that. And uh, Nirpint, I want to ask you, you know, in similar category, mein, do you agree with what Tanvir and Ruchita are saying? Or you think there are some, you know, you have another view? Uh, no, but what Tanvir and Ruchita is saying is right. Uh, but yes, uh, what Mr. Panda said, the same concern. Uh, yeah, digital presence is very high nowadays. But uh, for a company like ours, is still in the beginning stage of uh, spending on digital and we are we have just started learning how to spend on digital uh, what are the activities we should do what type of budget we should spend uh, and and that is why uh, this uh, session we wanted to understand uh, like what should be the strategy and uh, how we should take forward this for digital marketing and all. No, I'm glad, uh, you know, at least you're thinking about it. Like I said, ke, matlab, the first step is to start thinking about it and understanding that the consumers are there and the consumers that you are looking for today, not just urban consumers, but people who are also living, uh, you know, uh, in tier two, tier three cities are using digital as perhaps their first, uh, uh, you know, choice in mediums. 
uh, is there and when the consumer is there as marketers and as uh, business owners you know all of us have to start thinking how to reach out to them so i I'm, uh, i'm glad that's on your uh, mind um mm-hmm. you know um moving on next uh, you know uh gagan would you like to share i'm just curious to learn like would there be any one aspect of your business where you're planning to adopt digital advertising completely you know because you said that uh, you know you earlier said that there is um, uh, you know offline will always be large of course i agree offline will be large but you also said that will be the largest part uh, why do you think offline will be still the largest part and why not digital would love to hear it, you know what you think are obstacles that you face and uh, what are some of the challenges uh, that you may face you know uh, before considering digital you know what what why is it that you would think that uh, offline works better still for you uh, rubina to be very frank um, uh, i am very much aware that online will be the next big thing for us also the whole world is moving towards that but having said that i am uh, i'm not really um, prepared or rather educated as to which medium to choose from you know when you you when you guys talk about digital it's a very broad spectrum thing you are talking about you know i do understand that now which medium on digital has to be chosen is still to be learned by me so once i get to know whether my uh, product is good on youtube or is it good on uh, facebook social media insta and all that or is it good on a different platform and then again uh the kind of age group i am talking about you know my age group the, my, the best buyers are 40 plus for me we have right. seen in our retail industry 40 plus people have money they have decision power they buy the most now those people which is for for them which is the best medium a b my product for for my product which is the best medium and c if if let's say if Uh, from people like tanveer and you guys also guiders and tell us that you now for us this would be the next uh, the best medium to choose from then again we will have to start working on as to what will be the content absolutely right? should we simply post uh, products with prices or should we simply start with the level of uh, educating the customers first talking about the products and their benefits first and then come on to the uh, you know sales level so it's a long story Uh, to understand you know so <laughs> i am really confused <laughs> no no i absolutely uh, understand you know your dilemma that of course uh, you know it is digital itself has become very vast and like what to do uh, what which is right for your business and how to kind of nurture uh, your potential customers from you know the awareness trade into the sales and with relevant contextual content uh, that you have to do all the time can be overwhelming before you start but yes it is uh, perhaps you know people like us we try to, try to make it sound overly complicated but i, I promise you not it uh, it's no, not that no I, i will share an experience here i want to share an experience here uh, as a business entrepreneur a people uh, pitched us as agencies to market uh, for us on digital and we chose the uh, to our knowledge we chose the best person and then they would come and ask you what would be your spend sir i would say okay let's do 50000 rupees a month now that 50000 they are spending they are doing you know um, likes and this and that what what they are buying god knows uh, but is that actually helping me as as yeah. somebody just said that roi is still to be understood whether Absolutely. that particular medium actually work for us or is it something else which is working for us so that's what we have to understand and learn Yeah, totally uh akash welcome to the panel uh, i know you joined in a little bit late and uh, yeah. perhaps you've heard some of uh, uh, the uh, you know interesting conversation that we are hearing what's your view how is digital uh, is digital working for you in the first place are you uh, are you thinking about digital do you think it works for you is it working for you are you considering what are your thoughts around it yeah first of all uh, my apologies for being late today and yeah definitely digital is one thing that uh, See, it's there are two options. We are doing it or we are not doing it. But one thing is for sure that everybody knows this behind the mind that it's a necessity that cannot be ruled out. Now the thing is where you have limited budgets. So since uh, decades there has been a chunk like this percentage will go in the TVCs. This percentage will go in the 
print, this will go on air, radio. So now to shell out from which portion, shelling that amount out and investing in digital, and then is it working more than the traditional where we have shelled that out from? So that statistically and uh, uh, like uh, quantitatively has to be justified. And somehow I feel as what Tanvi rightly said about the customization. So one thing that customization can happen the, in a best manner is only in digital. For example, if I have a I've spent huge amounts of money on a brand ambassador, but that's a, for a Hindi speaking belt. So I can't can't use that if I'm launching my brand in a, a southern India state. So that is where my that portion of the TVC goes wasted. So where that is where digital comes in. And I believe definitely. Uh, a quarter of the ad budgets, uh, if it is in digital, then that should do wonders for sure. And we are definitely uh, have already started it. The only issue is to first convince ourselves through some case studies as to uh, knowing going there is important and very necessary. But when to go, that is an iceberg that we need to just break. And there where we need help of experts like you. So Tanvir, how do we break that iceberg? I was just going to step in, uh, Rubina. You know, I can I can uh, safely say that between Ruchita, me, and the large Google team that we have here in India, we would love to read out a simpler story on digital for you all. It isn't as complicated as it sounds. It's just that it's grown so fast that you hear of so many new entities, right? That makes it confusing. But the beauty of this platform is that there's an ability that you can pretty much plan for whole of digital using a common repository. So you do not need to go to such so many entities. That's the beauty of this platform. So Akash, gone are the days of single media planning, right? Uh, I mean, in, in today's day and age, we would go crazy if we do single media planning. Just imagine, I'm sure you already do, uh, besides the uh, team at Google calling you up, I'm sure you get hundreds of media calls every day, right? It's impossible for you and Dagan and Dr. Aditya, etc. to go ahead and manage this, right? So now it's the time of cross-media planning where you do it together. That's the reason I said you give Ruchita and my team a business objective, a marketing objective. Is it reach? Is it sales? Is it tier one? Is it tier two? And let us come back to you with a consolidated cross-media plan, which deduplicates this wave, right? So that your money is eventually used in the most effective of manner and digital gives you that power. I've worked on the TV side. I've worked on the radio side in my career. And trust me, it's been an evolution for me in learning as well. And, and just like that, just as I, it was simplified for me, we'd love to simplify it even for you alongside our partners. So uh, that's definitely something I can I can uh, help you out with. And Ruchita and I can definitely help you out with. Yeah. So Tanvir, what I'm really hearing from everybody is that I think, uh, well, I can safely say, I haven't asked everybody, but I think there's consensus that their intent is to be on digital. Uh, while there are I mean, different people have different constraints. One is obviously the complexity that I think people, folks like us, you know, who've been in digital have uh, sort of uh, maybe built it. We need to simplify it uh, for people to be able to, uh, you know, come on very, very, uh, you know, in a simple, easy manner, make it easy for them. So I think one is that. Also, there is, I think, uh, some challenge around having the right content. Uh, uh, put on digital, so having the right assets, etc., put on digital. So that's really uh, uh, what I'm hearing, uh, you know, uh, at the moment. And uh, I just want to go around and ask, um, you know, all of you, Akash, Nirmit, Kagan, um, Aditya, and Mr. Panda, that uh, you know, um, I'm sure all of you uh, do some uh, part of your uh, marketing uh, spends which are digital. And I'll start with you, Akash. Uh, tell me, what is it that uh, you do in digital, you know, besides social media? You know, I'd love to hear that. And how has that, you know, what's your experience been with that? Okay, so the uh, biggest what we've done was, uh, during the elections, we had uh, a paid digital, we did it with a news channel on their digital platform. And the response was so much that it was directed to our website and we were not equipped with it. So the, our website crashed. Because okay. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so the response was there, but we, there was not a, enough preparedness at your end. Yeah, because I was, we, we were just absolutely, I was 100% sure that uh, not more than 1 million people will come, but it was 15x of that. So, wow. that, so that was uh, one, and then we started doing it. Uh, we do it, uh, paid media, we do banners, but it has all been like not a very structured format. It's not constant. So, sure. we, and sometimes when we feel that if I have to take out a budget, I know it's not realistic because it's very small, but I just do it because I want to be there. I want to say I'm going digital. I wanted to answer your question today. That is why maybe I was doing it. <laughs> so if, we, if this thing comes from experts like you, this is the X amount. So I think that would be more uh, better for the brand. It would be more in terms of measurability would be better. Yes. And it would enable us to gain us confidence to keep doing it in a, a major uh, media uh, shareholder of the spending pattern. Understood. So help in planning your budget so that they deliver better for you on digital is uh, your ask. Yeah. Really. Uh, fair point. Uh, Nimrit, I want to ask you, ke besides, you know, again, social media, social media, but uh, e e-com bhi baut, aajkal log karne lage hai, you know, thoda sa, matlab, go to the e-com channels, unke saath thoda uh, partnership karke, you know, you start selling. But uske alawa, you know, what have you done on digital? Have you, have you experimented with digital? What has your experience been? Uh, actually, uh, honestly, uh, we don't understand that digital is a new way of connecting and engaging with the customers. It, it represent a new way of doing business. Uh, right. As you said, we are selling uh, through e-commerce uh, stores as well as we are doing some, uh, some market places like Amazon and Flipkart also. Uh, over there, our prime objective of selling online is customer awareness, customer connect. Uh, we are also using uh, some uh, digital platform like uh, Salesforce management app for our sales team also. Okay. Uh, which empower our team to... Gagan, um, I want to ask you that, um, you know, uh, like I started off saying that video platforms today have uh, uh, become very, very large, you know, whether they're long form, short form, video platforms are like really gaining traction because a lot of users are there. Have you experimented on paid advertising other than social media or e-com, you know, have you gone on to any of the video platforms, uh, you know, experimented there? Uh, frankly speaking, Rubina, we have yet to experiment the video platforms. Uh, till date, uh, as, a, as far as digital marketing is concerned, we have been spending uh, some amount of money, uh, a very minimum uh, share, and that was on social media marketing, the Facebook, Instagram and all. And um, uh, we have done Google AdWords and stuff like that, but not to a great extent because um, uh, as you as you understand that we have been very conventional, old style print and you know electronic media advertisers. So uh, today, although I would say that almost uh, ten percent of my spend has <clears throat> gone into digital, but ninety percent still still remains on. You know, outdoor and print media and other stuff. But uh, as far as video platforms are concerned, we are yet to try one. Sure. And, you know, I'm just curious. I'm going to just press on this a little bit more. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, everybody today in today's world cares a lot about profitability and ROI, etc. You know, uh, when also especially when it's marketing spends, you know, everybody's very, very uh, cautious that uh, their marketing spends deliver. So, how do you uh, how do you uh, you know uh, track uh, or how do you measure the effectiveness of your marketing spends? Uh, you know, see if you ask me frankly, it's not very uh, you know it's not possible for us to measure vis-a-vis uh, -vis the spend. But um, you know, uh, we only understand by the number of calls our sales team receive. You know, the numbers uh, which are flashed or advertised. Uh, the number of calls you get, number of inquiries you generate out of that, or emails uh, you get, or the number of hits you get on your own website. So um, relatively, uh, print has worked the best for us till date, or um, the second best would be SMS marketing. That's how we have been doing. Uh, when we do a digital marketing, it's very difficult to measure. 
it's very very difficult to measure uh, but uh, still uh, you know uh, we we have rather uh, you know we, we have used this tool for branding more rather than selling so that's that's how i would like to put it you know uh, we have used uh, digital marketing for more of a branding exercise rather than uh, selling exercise although uh, as a, as a uh, from the profitability point of view i would love to have conversions from digital marketing and you know uh, and which will turns into profit that would be the best way uh, to look forward and that's how what we want to do in future um, but as you uh, as i said that uh, no video we have not come and tried so you know uh, ruchita i want to come to you and ask you uh do you think digital can provide better measurability how can brands leverage that what's your view thank you for the question rupina and uh, pragar nakash uh, you know everyone thank you for your candid uh, experience with digital and your apprehensions i think this is uh, something that uh, you know we actually hear from a lot of advertisers so aap akele nahi ho you know in this uh, experience and these questions uh, so i'll maybe want to try and uh, you know pick up a little bit of how the conversation has been saying ki digital ko aasan banane ki bhi zarurat hai you know there is a need to make digital easy so maybe the way i would say is that uh, all the branding solutions that digital paid digital marketing offers uh, it's very possible for uh, you know as tanvir had said you know for tanvir and my teams to actually draw parallels for you with regards tv तो जैसे आप टीवी को मेजर करते हैं आप रीच फ्रीक्वेंसी ब्रांड लिफ्ट यू नो लुकिंग एट हाउ द अवेयरनेस इंडेक्स इंक्रीजेस यू नो एड रिकॉल इंक्रीजेस द सेम एक्चुअली कैन बी डिलीवर्ड ऑन ब्रांड Uh, on digital media as well so i would actually kind of go back and also answer akash's question that how should you start i would say start with, because if you're familiar and comfortable with how tv delivers to the metrics that you are familiar with start off with that i think digital can do that as powerfully if not more now coming to performance rubina to the question that you know gagan was talking about and that you specifically asked me i think on performance uh aap leads ki baat kar rahe the gagan and you know i think you know whether it's video platforms whether it's uh, display uh, you know maybe a parallel in your uh, you know comparable this thing i would like to say is think of your newspaper ads as a display uh, or a search placement right so that's a parallel to look at and the power of digital is not only can we kind of give you results in terms of leads but we can actually help you measure the journey from the engagement of the ad all the way to sales and not just that leads right so there is a very seamless way to measure all the way from you know uh, how many leads have you got is have those leads been quality leads so digital also gives you the power to say that you know if this lead has been more you know in quality then the engine can learn from itself and start churning out more quality leads for you so that's the you know other advantage the second advantage with actually performance and jab aap roi dekhna chahte hain of digital the other thing is that jab aap लेट्स ए न्यूज पेपर में एड प्लेस करते हैं या आउट ऑफ होम प्लेस करते हैं आपका वहां पे पिलफ्रिज होता है राइट वेर इज इन डिजिटल वॉट यू एंड अप पेइंग फॉर इज ओनली समथिंग दैट हैज गिवन यू रिजल्ट्स सो इवन फ्रॉम अ कॉस्ट एफिशिएंसी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू यू नो सो देयर इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ मेजरमेंट देयर इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ कॉस्ट एफिशिएंसी एंड द थर्ड एडवांटेज इज द इनसाइट्स दैट द टूल और द मशीन लर्निंग काइंड ऑफ इनकॉपरेट्स इन इटसेल्फ टू गेट you know higher quality views whether it's a branding objective that you're chasing or a conversion objective that you're chasing and i think those are you know some areas that you know maybe we can help you um discover and uncover about digital and i and i totally agree that the initial initiation for all of us you know whether it's rubina tanvir or us even when we kind of got into it it took us uh, you know we had to educate ourselves we had to experience it and and it had to you know deliver results for us to really believe in it right because seeing is believing at the end of the day so we have to experience it and that's when the belief comes in and we are very happy to handhold uh you know your companies in that and you know i also kind of refer back to what uh, dr banerji had said at the beginning of the conversation right where he had said that he is actually been able to very effectively learn along the way and use for his business when you know covid hit and maybe i could actually you know i'd love to hear dr banerji's views that you know have you seen the power of uh, digital in in delivering performance for you and being able to measure it 
So, uh, Ruchita, what happened actually was I was in the same kind of dilemma as my other, uh, you know, counterparts are here in terms of how to optimize and how to utilize uh, digital medium wherein we can uh, somewhere quantify the outcome of it. You know, you can keep spending on it, but if you cannot quantify what you actually want out of it, then it does not make a lot of sense for a business, you know, for, for, a, for a business idea to culminate into a reality. Uh, it so happened then that because I got those three months, I did a digital marketing course myself, an online digital marketing course for free, right? Because I, so I, what I personally feel is that till you do not know, till you do not know what you are dealing with, you need to understand the tools first. If you do not know how to use the tools, it doesn't matter how much you try to explain me how to use that, I would not understand because I have never known how to use it. You know, so I have to have a little bit of idea as to how to use it. So uh, just because I have a hammer does not mean that, you know, I have to be a, 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 so say, a, 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 a smith, but I need to know to that, okay, there is a hammer and this is what it can do. Right? So just to have that much idea, I did a proper three months course to understand that. And that is where I became very, very confident that whatever money we are spending, and since we were a starter, and in startups, you know, there's always a you know cash flow constraint. So you'll have to very wisely see that where to spend, how much money to get, how much results. So it is always a proportional relationship between what to spend, how to spend, where to spend, and how much business can you expect out of it, right? So we were actually struggling at that point in time because we, we were you know, launching a new brand to reach out to the maximum, maximum eyeballs. So we very confidently were expanding in terms of distribution network. Today we are, we are present in about 20 states, 400 plus distributors of ours, right? We have a service network of 600 plus uh, service partners. But that is one part of the story. If my customer does not know, now today, say if you, I'm just giving you a case, you know, wherein I benefited. If your customer can just log in to a, a platform wherein uh, he can click and see, okay, this is where I can get my electric vehicle from. If I need a service, this is where I can get my service from. These are the reviews. These are the possible uh, service challenges that I'm going to face. So your customer can make a much more informed decision, isn't it? So this is where it helped us a lot. So uh, with the kind of business model that we were running, where we thought that we, instead of getting into manufacturing, we will become a facilitator and we'll put up a platform which will be an, uh, in, sort, in, in, in sorts of an online offline hybrid. Moving ahead, Ola gave me a, a brilliant example of how you, you can use uh, digital medium efficiently without even having a single dealer point. Ola you know, booked 100,000 vehicles only through its digital platform. So that's the power of digital. See, at the end of the day, what are you looking for? You're looking for sales, right? And without even having that entire infrastructure, now Ola has 100,000 vehicles sold in a matter of you know, months, right? So that is where we thought, why can't we use that? Because we are at a much more advantage. We now have 400 uh, display centers wherein our customer can actually go and experience the vehicle. So we said, okay, let us get into a hybrid model. Let us do a booking online and let the customer go and experience. And if they book online, they get, say, an X amount as a special discount. So, you know, you got to give those fringe benefits to initially attract the customer onto your platform. So, gradually, so again, I mean, uh, last day also, you know, when we were discussing, I said that it has to be case specific, it has to be business specific because. It, is, it cannot be one solution for all. It will always be the kind of business or product you're dealing with. But personally speaking, we uh, initially we thought now whatever we spend directly or indirectly, when I say indirectly, even whatever contents we make, say we shoot a vehicle or say we do a, so recently we did a strategic tie up with a manufacturing facility. We did a nice shoot of that. So we created a content out of it. Instead of putting it on to uh, say news or XYZ, which we also do, but simultaneously we are very, very active uh, on the digital platform. So we will put it on YouTube, we'll put it on uh, our uh, WhatsApp, we'll, we'll populate it as much as possible so that our network comes to know, okay, now they have done another joint venture. Okay, so there is something new happening. 
so communication has become much more easier you know so if i if i have to um, send an information from me to my entire network today it can happen not only my network also to my customers it is very very easy if i use a digital platform and you spend much less that is the best part so you don't need to so tomorrow if i want to announce that okay uh, say for this from this day to this date if you do a booking you get an additional discount of 5000 now there are few ways i could have done that i could have gone on to uh, a newspaper and given a quarter page ad to do that that would have restricted me to most of the locations you know and that too i do not know how much conversion i'm going to get because digital also gives me the advantage of uh, geo tagging of segregating of segmenting my tg that is the biggest advantage so i can directly target my audience whom i really want to sell the product who is my influencer who is my customer i can target that that is the biggest advantage of digital and like rujitra direct, uh, rightly said and tanvir was also explaining the same fact that your efficiency goes up by notches here it's a two way street digital the advantage of digital is it's a two way street it is not only that you are putting out something there in the market you are also getting feedbacks from the market simultaneously so on all our digital platforms we have been getting feedbacks of okay you need to improve this okay there here we are not getting service so that's a huge input for the company itself to grow further you know comparisons sir ye ye gaadi yahan pe itne ki mil rahi hai to aapki gaadi mehangi kyon you know and it is coming directly it is coming from a primary source so i am saving on a lot of so to say market survey cost which i do not need to do now because it is happening automatically right so and a lot of uh, informed decisions can be made uh, on the part of the company because we have a lot of information which can now be quantified we can put it in buckets that okay this west north south there are four zones so that is how we do business so we will we'll split it in each east west north south so these out of these zones these are the states wherein we are getting the maximum <laughs> it becomes so easy to plan you can plan your supplies better you can plan your inventories better you can plan everything better and business is all about planning and execution i think that is where i'll rest my case thank you uh, i think you made the case very well for digital and i hope uh, some of the other panelists today have you know got inspiration from your own uh, the way you are uh, using and leveraging uh, digital uh, i know we're running short on time but i just want to quickly uh, go, uh, get a uh, get a view from mr panda and ask him that what is your ask from the platforms what should platforms do to make life simpler for you to help you you know adopt this digital journey uh, well as i said we are already into e-commerce when we are not at all at that point of time we are not at all into web advertising and all we forded into e-commerce and uh, that also did help us in spreading the brand awareness we got lot of feedbacks from the consumers uh, we were on amazon and tripad platforms so we got lot of customer feedbacks and all then we try to understand and realize the realization dawned upon us that yes the power of digital is really happening and we have to leverage this digital technology to for our web advertising and our web marketing also so we started uh, believing in this digital kind of thing being a practicable solution for our advertising and marketing needs so we are now in the process of implementing erp and crm for our marketing and our brand awareness uh, needs and maybe within an year it is going to be materialized now we are already taking the help of an agency who have uh, very good skill sets in this uh, digital technology platforms so they will do it for us so we hope that uh, well digital transformation is taking place and by 2050 Seventy percent of marketing is going to be done on digital platforms. So, with that uh, kind of speculation, we think we have to work more and more on digital platforms for success, for reaching out to the consumers, as I said, in a large way. I I just have one thing to say. I think it'll be much sooner that seventy percent of uh, all the marketing will be on digital. That's my personal view. But uh, with uh, that, I'll uh, just go to uh, Nirmit once again and ask 
him that what is his ask of the platforms as parting thoughts you know how can platforms help uh, uh, you know brands adopt their digital journey uh, yeah actually uh, i was saying that uh, we are present on few of the uh, mediums like social media we are doing on the uh, market basis e commerce and all but still uh, digital is a very huge uh, place and we have just touched a few of the avenues uh, there is still a large chunk of uh, avenues which which we have not still explored so yes we are definitely willing to explore this uh, avenues but still uh, uh, a sizable part of our tg is elderly people especially female hence uh, besides digital media con conventional media is still important part for us and hence uh, we cannot completely ignore this media as well uh, and this media generally conventional media it's up our major parts of media spends so we have to uh, continue with conventional spends also so we just need to understand uh, the like how much we should spend on digital and how much we should increasing spend on digital gradually so yeah this is all yeah. Absolutely, uh, understand your point of Subhira, view. Can I just uh, come in and uh, share an example with Lidmir? Uh, you know, this is an example from uh, you know Dabur uh, Homemade, uh, which is like a competitor in a way to the spices. Uh, this thing, you know, so they make these pre-mix uh, this thing. So what they had done, uh, you know, some time back with us is they've actually uh, you know done content packs with us. So, Nirmit, to your point, you're absolutely right. If your customer segment is, you know, on are, are women who are interested in cooking, one of the interesting phenomena that has happened in the last one and a half years is that a lot of Indians are actually not just Indians in India, but you know, Indians globally as well are coming to YouTube to check out recipe videos. And you know what Dabur uh, did very effectively is actually, uh, you know, did these content pack, you know, paid marketing where they were able to see a double impact on their ad recall. You know, so for example, even if, you know, you are wanting to address a niche customer segment and you want to address them when they are in the space of thinking about cooking, then also, you know, there are some very interesting solutions that are now available. And, uh, and you know, obviously, like uh, I think we discussed earlier as well, you know, it has to be customized for your company. It has to be blended in like a multimedia, uh, you know, our media mix plan that the news spoke about earlier. But there are now possibilities that that exist. And I think, you know, as as brands and as advertisers, I think it would be lovely to, uh, you know, hear about all these options that are now available. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Richita. It's uh, an interesting way of integrating, uh, you know, the brand and the content story itself. Uh, but I think we're running out of time. So I'm just going to summarize uh, the whole panel by saying that, uh, yes, uh, you know, we heard the brands, we understand you know, there are challenges, uh, you know, that you face while you look at digital media, whether it's the complexity of the media, how to plan for it, how to use the content, how to address the right uh, target audience on digital. These are some things which are running in your mind, but it, at the same point in time, you know, it's heartening to know that, you know, all of you are thinking of digital and uh, going beyond uh, just uh, being on social media and, e-commerce channels and uh, you know I think uh, the takeout for uh, the platforms is to see how they can work with brands partner with them to simplify this journey for them and help them adopt digital and scale their businesses uh, because digital is here the consumers are here and they they are looking to interact with brands and services on the medium of their choice you know, with that, I'd like to end this panel. Thank you for a very interesting and candid conversation. I really enjoyed this, uh, hosting this panel, and I hope you had a good time too. Thank you.